Welcome along Monday night, 8 p.m. As if you haven't seen enough of us today already, we are back for the live round. To me, Phil Buzz, Jack Garwood and Dan Simpson are here to run you through all the talking points. And like always, boys, there's never been a dull day in darts, has there? Never. Also, best wishes to Boise, currently recovering. Bless him. Yeah, uh, D- D- Dan is here, obviously, because Boise is um, recovering in hospital following surgical procedures. <laughs> And it's, I tell you what, it sounded a bit, ooh. Painful. Yeah, don't feel like I can sit comfortably even thinking about it. Yeah, it's, um, bless him. He went to, went, went and watched Man United and then this, and he's, hopefully he'll be all right for Blackport at the weekend, but we're not holding out much hope. So if he's not, we're going to get Billy in front of the computer and teach him what to do. That, hey, I tell you what, he's a dab hand with anything electronic. Probably far, far ahead of his dad in many of those words. Start. And he calls you Mr. Gob, so he'd be the perfect employee. He said, <laughs> you know, he's been saying because he's very excited about the weekend. He said he's looking forward for a catch up with Mr. Gob. We'll have to make sure we uh, catch up with you. <laughs> Bless him. Yeah. Um, but that's what we said. Never a dull week in darts, that is for sure. But first of all, we're going to jump into the chat room. Uh, Tommy is in. How are we all doing? Harry, Malachi, Kieran. Um, oh yeah, I, I, I wonder if they're staying at the same hotel. That'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gary to win the world that you wouldn't put it past him. That's for sure. Uh, evening, how we doing, Owen? You know, I'm, I'm deliberately putting this one up. <laughs> well done. Uh, how are we doing, uh, Alex? Uh, Jamie is in. Max, how are we doing? <laughs> full two hours of Gary Anderson chat. I don't think we can do full two hours. We can probably do hour and 50 or something, can we? Yeah. Uh, how are we doing, Carl? Hope you are good, mate. Double session of online darts. Tremendous stuff. I'm not sure everyone would say that, but the majority of people would. Uh, how are we doing, Craig? And... David is in from New Zealand as well. Pleasure to have you on board. Uh, just shared some links on social media as well, which is always a pleasure. Make sure you give them a like and a share so you can see that they are round. Uh, Henry says, uh, PB, I've spent more time with you in the last 40 hours than I have my missus. You wouldn't believe how often my missus says that to me. <laughs> <laughs> you spent more time this weekend with Phil and God than you. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. S. Uh, Rebel is in from Ireland as well. Uh, Glenn Durrant will be on the part of the Teesside Massive. The Teesside Takeover um, will be on as well. But lots to talk about. Um, first of all, we're going to try and rewind. Look, I'm not going to lie. We have got absolutely jack shit to put on screen today because we jumped straight off the Pro Tour and I haven't had time to edit anything. <laughs> so we are just going to waffle, ramble, and talk you Not through. Change the show number. Oh, look at me! I got Gary Anderson right. Yeah, but we're still a week behind on show number. Oh, wait a minute, wind your freaking neck in. It's not in place <laughs> either. I've already looked, so it's definitely on your Photoshop instead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to slip it in the background and go, "Yeah, look at me! I'm the yeah. best." Oh, just a just just a Phil Gobbs OCD. Let me sort this out first. Right, I'll stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Double bars. It's mm. all gone wrong, isn't it? <laughs> no, I didn't have my head. Oh, I muted him. I forgot about that bit. I muted it because the mic was about to echo, and then I forgot to unmute you. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. Ooh, I tell you what, that was quick. That's what she said. <laughs> bit of plan B. <laughs> We're descending into chaos already. We're quoting the song lyrics and artists. Welcome oh, along, everyone. Um, right. First of all, we're going to go back to the Premier League and we're going to dissect it, call it for what it is. Um, first of all, we'll do the winners bit first of all. Kettering Price was pretty goddamn good, wasn't he? In Nottingham. Good. Yeah. Very, very, very good level. Good. Um... Oh, you were there, weren't you, Carl? You were, you were in the, in yeah. the room. Um, no, it, a great it, 
it looked good, looked good. But he certainly, I guess he certainly turned up best, like beyond outside of outside of Cardiff. Obviously, best he's played there this year. But he, he looked completely up for it as well. He, he, he looked that sort of, um, you know, confident arrogance that that uh, some love to love and some love to hate. But he was certainly on form. Um. Uh, yeah. Look, and he's now firmly in a playoff place and and looking good. But let's go through some of the other talking points. First of all, are we worried about Peter Wright yet? Because, again, he used those darts. And I used actually had a throw with a set very, very similar to the ones he used because Gezi nicked a set off of him. Um, they were horrid. I was just throwing them normally. And they weren't just going in at angles like that. They were going in and kicking to the left and kicking to the right. It's like, how what, what are they? Are they... Are they um prototype or are they something like are they, are they actually on you know let loose on the public or are they just something he's having to mess around with no i think they are let loose on the public um the the flight and stem combo are prototypes but it's literally like a molded flight and stem but really small so they just zoom through the air it's just like Bleh. but in protect of his darts look michael van gogh is only i say only as if this is poor this is poor for Michael Van Gerwen's standards. For me, I'd be delighted with this. But Michael Van Gerwen's only averaged 94.89 and battered Peter Wright 6-1. Yeah, he actually was in trouble, unlike Chris Dobie at 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a great night. <laughs> oh, don't worry, we're going to bring that up in a minute. Um, <laughs> but um, are we concerned yet? Because he has to play Michael Van Gerwen again this week. I think we were concerned week three and week four when he was winless, but everyone was saying it's too early to panic. Then you realise week four is actually a quarter of the way through the event. Then you see it transpire that little bit more. He gets a win against a very underpar Gezi, but then he has to play Michael, Michael, and then Gezi as well. So he's still got Van Gogh and Gezi, Michael Smith in his next three games as it is in the quarterfinals. Like, this is the Premier League. It doesn't get any easier. That That's the bit I think I... Because I've said for weeks, like you know, I'm not really worried. It's Peter, right? Like it'll be fine. It'll be fine. He'll he'll pick up a set of darts he quite likes, and, and he'll and he'll crack it. And then I think it was on the fallout bar last week. We, well, maybe no, it must be the week before last where you got, where we looked at who he plays next, and you think, well, where does he get? A, where does his win come from? If he's even at eighty percent, well, really tough to see. Then it's it's equally tough to see now. You know you can't. I can't see him winning. Certainly the next three weeks. Um, on that, who knows? But he's also in a like his leg. I think his, his leg difference is minus nineteen. So he's not. Yeah. He's not being edged out of games. He's being walloped. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm I'm concerned. And look, Peter Wright is a strong character. However, the Premier League has done funny things to funny people. Over the years, if you finish rock bottom with one or two wins the whole Premier League campaign, that's going to be a tough hurdle to come back from. It is more so for somebody that hasn't been in that environment or atmosphere before. Look, Peter Wright's record in this event is not great. I think that's, that's not an, that's maybe even an understatement at times. But he does have experience of bouncing back. He is quite an experienced pro. He's won titles here, there, and everywhere. And actually, he's not been a player that will carry significant form for a great deal of time. He'll rock up, he'll win a major, he'll disappear at a pro tour, ch chopping and changing, and he'll, he'll return. This this format's never going to suit Peter Wright because it's about consistency. And the one thing you can say about Peter Wright is he's not consistent. He never has been. No, ag agreed. But look, there are certainly <clears throat> marks. And now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury... I'm going to present to you some evidence about your typical darts fan that goes to the Premier League and doesn't have a clue what's going on and is just there to enjoy the beer. Yes. So, I present to you Article 1, and he's smirking away there. Mr Garwood, have you any defence that you were not paying attention to the darts in the Premier League and were just there to get pissed? Because at 3-0 to Chris Doby against Michael Smith, we get a Ping in our WhatsApp chat, Gob. Doby's in trouble here. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was texting a bit anyway, and every time I looked up, Michael Smith was banging in a decent visit. I was like, oh, Doby must be in a world of trouble here. Smith's absolutely free flowing. He looks brilliant. Every time I've looked up, bang. 
Toby you, must you be a in trouble. It. Maybe not. <laughs> Honestly, you sent me around the twist because I was thinking I, I nearly had I nearly had Sky out because I thought that wasn't working. Because so I, I was upstairs putting the kids to bed. My WhatsApp went off. And like Toby's in a world of trouble. I was thinking, well, what's the score? Hang on, he's phoning up, and and then I was like running to the telly. I'm going, oh no, my telly's not working. Like I must be behind. I think I'm stuck on some sort of streaming loop. And lo and behold, it was just you not paying attention, which is there. Uh... In my defence, he very nearly was in trouble. If Smith, takes it to a, if Smith takes it to a decider, well, or he's done. <laughs> yeah, but not, but, but not at the point you said it, he wasn't in a world of trouble. He was brutal. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I give you your typical Premier League fan, Mr. Jack Garwin. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're pissed. That's the issue. You <laughs> get pissed. Seven pound a pint. A picture was 28 quid. The, the, this Pop is work. what happens when people go... This is what happens when people go drinking in the south. People just stuck to the drinking in the north. They wouldn't have these issues. <laughs> oh, but honestly, that was um that was one of the funniest highlights of the day. And now Cullerton is in the house. Hope you are good as always, mate. Uh, Paddy is in. Uh, evening, Joe. Yeah, Gob Gob's took his cap off. His hair transplant looks all right. Um. Tad drunk, were we? No, I actually wasn't. On the way home, maybe, but I did rush the joke because I was like, oh, by four, yeah, fine. And then the <laughs> got five and a half left in this joke. It needs to go. Jar, Jar is in. Hope you are good, buddy. Um, yeah, look, we, we were just in absolute tears. The, the other one, interestingly, I want to talk about the all Welsh clash and not necessarily the result or anything like that, but Johnny Clayton's interview afterwards, that's the first time I've seen and her genuine emotion and frustration within Johnny Clayton. Yeah, but he didn't he didn't have a stinker. Like it, I mean, he, yeah, he didn't win the game and, and clearly that you know that frustrated him. But it's not like he it's not like he threw particularly badly, you know, sort of average mid nineties, couple of one eighties, he didn't get caught destroyed, six four and, I mean, he threw 57% on his doubles. Yeah. But whether or not he's frustrated that he's threw 57% on his doubles, average 95 and, and not won, then fair enough. But I don't think he can be too frustrated with his performance. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, 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 and well spotted now. Now I've said, God's moaning about the price of a pint when he's got two bottles of Prime on his shelf. Ah. They were like my PDC TV subscription. What? Nicked off jar? Well, nicked <laughs> <off>. <laughs> he didn't he didn't drink the prime. He just got the empty bottles to display on his shelf. They're just all uh, my friends bought them. I had a sip, didn't like it. I was like, oh, do you want to try? I was like, yeah, Sam. So I got the ice pop next door. I was like, that's the thing. Got Gob's had a drive to our wakey wines, in the end, got some of the old. <laughs> that's on. right, he's been to see <laughs> I've been on the way. I was about to say I was stopping on the way to Blackpool, but I'm not sure it's in the right there it's like <laughs> Well, fair, from, from, from yours, you could cut across. Leeds, yeah, like, yeah, I could. Yeah, to, to get across, I, I could definitely stop there. Dan's going to wake you up. Dan's I'm going to wake you up. I'll give you a big bag of those sweets. Oh, so that, that 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 was the Premier League. Look, and unfortunately, we'll we'll we're going to preview Newcastle up towards the end of the show. But the way the results went. The worst possible outcome for everyone. We Not have a me, because I could sit here and tell you it's stupid. <laughs> uh, repeat fixtures for next week, just in a different order. So is it, there's, as I understand, and I think I'm right, whilst we see the same set of quarterfinals, we will get different semis, won't we? Because yeah, the, yes. the, the bracket's different. The so, bracket's yes, different. we'll see a full set of first ones, but not second time round. Yeah. Yeah, just the four quarter finals are the same. Which is still frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Absolutely. But we'll, we'll come on to that later on. Uh, then, from there, we had Double Challenge Tour weekend. Um, however, yet again, someone stole the headlines. Um, and Dan, I think you commented on it as we were chatting and getting ready for the show before God arrived, that 
yet again, headline news in tabloid papers from Fallon Sherrick, the first lady to do a nine data in a PDC event in on the Challenge Tour. And it was covered by literally everyone, the Guardian, the Times, the Telegraph. And that was what, that's what I, you know, and, and we, uh, you know, we had a little crack about it in that people, there's there's lots of people very, very willing to comment on Fallon Sherrick and her place in darts and, and what is and isn't deserved and justified. But what they genuinely don't understand is like, when was the last time the Guardian ran a story on a nine data? You know, when was the last time the Telegraph covered darts in any way? Maybe it gets... 300 words after the world championships each year, you know, at the, you know, unless someone goes to jail, like if if this is some controversy, whereas like the reach that Fallon Sherrick has and the appeal that she has is, and, and, and it's the other thing with it as well is whilst, you know, we, and we sort of know that some of the things that she's, attempted or gone to do within the in the, the in the game as a whole you know going to q school challenge two of this year's going you know if you look at the whole as a whole it's going all right what she seems to do is she keeps doing very newsworthy things you know if you, if you sort of put the things together like first woman to win at alexander alexandra palace best result ever by a female in a major tournament when she got to the quarters of the Grand Slam. The final that she got in the Nordic Darts Masters, like she, w- what she does is always incredibly newsworthy. And and so she has a huge media appeal. This And, and it is, it, it's, she is box office without a doubt. And people, come, and so sort of Kyle just put in there, why, why is it newsworthy? Well, simply because if you go to any post made by the PDC or anybody else, you look you look at the PDC post about Fallon Sherrick's nine data and look at how many interactions that that tweet has compared to anything else that's been put out that month, it, it's ten times more. Therefore, it's newsworthy because everybody wants people to read their news. They want you to look on their website and go and look at things. And they literally, the Guardian and the Teller, they don't run stories that they don't think people are interested in. They just don't. It's a waste of time. It's uneconomical. It's, nobody clicks on it. The, ad, the adverts don't get any paper click. It's, it, it's not worth it. It, it. Whether you like it or not, she is massively like newsworthy and box office. And people want to hear about her and see it. Yeah, look, we've said, it, we've, we've said it time and time again, Gob, haven't we? The the numbers that she produces are literally off the scale. Yeah. And whether you love her, hate her or whatever, in terms of digital content and eyes on the sport, she is probably in the top three, maybe top four yeah, of the, the, the sport. And we're talking world champions, tour card holders, legends of the sport. And that's undeniable as well. For like you, you're silly zone. You you can literally see numbers that back that up. That's not you. It's not a turn of phrase that you're using, is it? Like they are facts. Yeah, uh, could com- completely is, is the thing. We can we can back it up with, with with the numbers that that we see is is the thing. And look, the conspiracy theories went into overdrive today when she got a call up. To, to the pro tour, and that, that I like Dan Dawson's Twitter at the best of times, but <laughs> it, 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 him and Scotty Mitchell were, were, were absolutely genius today on <laughs> on, on Twitter. I do rate it. Um, but yeah, look, congratulations to Fallon, first female to hit a nine data in the PDC. Um, but actually, on to the challenge tour itself. Uh, Barry Van Pier with victory in the first event, challenge tour number six, beating Peter Jakes in the final. Um, some very of the normal suspects are also around. Danny Lowby getting to a semi-final. Sebastian Bilalecki, John Henderson, Conan Whitehead all in the quarter finals. Um, and then Players Championship 7. Challenge. The big Hendo weekend started. Uh, John Henderson wins Challenge Tour number 7 to go top of the uh, Order of Merit at that point and is still there now. Being Ron Moulin camp in the final, 
Uh, Niall was in the chat room. Congratulations. Got to a semi-final as well. Good to see Big John Henderson winning again. I think he's, he's one of the standout names that currently don't have a tour card, is, isn't he? Like It was unfortunate to see him lose it. He's been pretty consistent without it. Played down in the Super Series. We've seen him pick up success on the Challenge Tour. Is he still number one now? I don't yeah. know how yeah. Saturday results dictated that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, look, he's, he's just... He needed to go back to this level, I think. He needed to get comfortable winning again and being in that environment and, and not chasing constantly. And I think he settled back into that pretty well. That's what I think. I think, that, let's be honest, the, the 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 tour card race was weighing, you know, very, very much on, you know, every, every game mattered. Um, he's playing probably in the game itself. I don't know, you know, in terms of his life as a whole, but, you know, in, in the match itself, probably not as much immediate pressure on to, you know, he's becoming, he's winning regularly. He's becoming a bit more habitual. He's putting games away. He's he's getting ahead in games and closing them out. And I just think the more that he continues to do that and hangs around at the top of that, um, at the top of that challenge to order of merit, then, you know, we, we, we're going to see, I, I, I do think we'll see him again on the tour without a doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah, completely. Um, yeah, so all the all the, said, why didn't Henderson get a call? So the um, calls and the reserve list were based off of the last order of merit before this one had started, and they went down the list and all were contacted, but a lot actually left Germany on the Saturday night. Was well, look, I think what I said to you, Phil, I think people sometimes people don't realise where it is, and you know they just think, oh, there's a pro tour event, like if. If that event was in Barnsley, there's no way Fallon plays because she's not, you know, she's she's just not high enough up the call list where she would be the first one to say yes. She's she's in the Germ she's in Germany. She's still, you know, at a hotel 100 meters from the venue or in the venue. Like she, when she gets to say, you know, when they get that far down the list, she is available where others aren't. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then moving on to Challenge Tour number. Eight uh, was Ron won by Ron Moulinkamp, 5 0 uh, over Alexander Merckx in the final. Man, we have seen in the Super Series a very Dutch feel to this one. Uh, Danny Lauby again was consistent all weekend, another quarter final for him. Um, and then last one, challenge tour number nine was won by Dragutin Horvath being Christian Kist in the final. But again, shout out David Evans getting to a semi-final is encouraging, boys, because he has unbelievable talent. We we've seen that, um, but almost forgotten how to win again. So super stuff to see David Evans get into the latter end of a of a competition again and just rekindling some of that confidence and, and self belief. His actions right up there in the game as well for me. He's solid, and when he did win the Challenge Tour and put himself on the Pro Tour, there was high hopes for David Evans. Like action-wise and performances he produced when he won the Challenge Tour. Pretty comfortably as well back then. Um, he just didn't quite deliver that on the next step up. So just that year to reset, go again on the Challenge Tour, get back to being in an environment where you're not perhaps... It's that saying in golf, isn't it? It's like, can you putt for your dinner? It's like, can you just go back to that environment, take a little step back um, and, and readjust and, and build up and go again? Yeah, the reason we kind of sped through them is because without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we give you the one and only, the three times Lakeside Champion of the World and the former Premier League Champion, Mr. Glenn Durrant. Does it? How are we doing? I don't know. I'm sitting in the dark shed. I've just finished coaching, so I'm not promoting anything, I promise. <laughs> uh, good to have you on board, mate. Uh, first of all, how excited are you for the seniors, the champions of champions, this weekend in Blackpool? Oh, looks like we may have lost Dazza's connection. It's because Dan's got all of the Wi-Fi in the northeast. Yeah, I, I've, I've got all of Teesside's broadband pumped into this. Oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, we might have movement. Oh, can you hear us now, buddy? Oh, 
I can hear you. Is it my is it my internet? Or... Yeah, I think so, mate. Um, what's your, what if you are you doing it off your phone or laptop? Uh, iPad. Um, to be fair, it should be all right. We can hear, we can hear you. So all good. Yeah. Um, how ex yeah. how excited are you for the seniors this weekend? Uh, whilst we try and get Glenn out, we'll just carry on chatting anyway. A lot of us, a lot, a lot of only 56k dial up in T Sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've still got dial up here. I've just been, do you know, tonight I've worked with someone from Australia and America, and now I'm speaking to you guys, and uh, yeah, I'm all over the place here, so I do apologize. Uh, to be fair, that's better, mate. We can, we can hear you now, that's all good. Um, Champions of Champions starts this weekend, the golden ticket. Excited? Yeah, I think it's the worst possible draw for Phil Taylor, the golden ticket, because, you know, he's going to be playing someone who's had lengthy games on the Friday, uh, come through a, you know, a really strong field. But, you know, Taylor's synonymous to Blackpool for me. And, you know, it's just going to be great to see him back there. And, uh, yeah, really looking forward to that one. I hope I get the opportunity uh, to commentate on that. Uh, yeah, look, absolutely. And the whole concept of this golden ticket, it's fresh, isn't it? Yeah, it's different. And like I said, I guess, you know, and when you look at some of the, the players, I could understand all the arguments of the, the players who got the invite, you know, including myself. And, you know, a lot of the, the real informed players over the age of 50 have been in them qualifying groups. And, uh, yeah, for sure, I certainly right now wouldn't get through them, like right? the people like Darren Johnson and Colin McGarry have, etc. So, so when I saw the draw, I thought that's a real tough one for Phil. But knowing Phil like I do now, like I said, he, I don't think he really cares. It's more about how much work he's putting. Uh, and just to see him back playing in Blackpool again is, is great for us Dart fans. The thing is itself, Glenn, obviously you played in the World Championship. Have you been taken aback on how good the standard has become already? It's, it's just fantastic for the players who probably thought their careers were over and uh, people are just getting this opportunity again and they're working so hard behind the scenes. As obviously, we've got Channel 5, uh, BT, you know, the BBC Red Button all involved in this one. To, to get a free-to-air TV show would be absolutely massive for the seniors and uh, I believe there's a product there, you know, Jason and... You know, both Jason's right behind us. And, uh, yeah, really looking forward to it. We just need the crowds there, like the word at the Circus Tavern, and get behind the players. The players are loving it. You know, the prize money is great. It's just to say, it's just giving players a real opportunity. Swapping the hockey for the microphone this weekend. How excited are you to be, first, to, to be on commentary? And secondly, where's your game at, at the minute? You know, honestly, Jack, it's it, it, it's great that I'm doing the commentary because, you know, right here, I, I show this one to everybody who comes to my coaching. That's a, a trophy, my long, long service award, you know, in, in my old job in housing where I'm using my brain again, you know, I'm using my vocabulary again and, you know, just having the opportunity, you know, the last 18 months of darts were, oh, God, it was, it was just awful. Driving to venues, knowing you're going to lose is just the worst feeling in the world. Practice it horrendous, uh, and then knowing you've got to be live on Sky, whether it was Premier League, the Grand Prix was pretty horrific as well. So I'm just glad I'm in a real good headspace right now. I'm feeling good. I'm happy. Family life, personal life is brilliant. You know, the only problem I've got is my, is my diary is just too busy trying to accommodate exhibitions, commentary. Uh, the coaching's just gone out of this out of this world, and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in a fantastic place. My game's okay, you know, and, but no better. If I was at the seniors this week, all the palpitations, the anxiety, the tension would come to me again and I just wouldn't be sort of enjoying the week. I'm just totally glad to be out the limelight right now. And, you know, I, I'm focusing on peaking around about September, 
uh, you know, with the hope of going back to Q school and just to end the story of being competitive again and not remembered. Because nine out of ten people who bump into me in the street, you know, all they remember is the last 18 months. And uh, it would be nice to finish the story just being competitive again. Just obviously how it all it all ended, Glenn. And, and a lot of people um, put it down to COVID, but I know you've been adamant and just I'm just reiterating the point that you've always said from day one it had nothing to do with that, didn't you? No, no, I, was, that's, I wish it was. I don't, you know, then you get people feeling sorry from put it down. I just lost, you know, my time, man. I just lost how to throw it. I played Gerwin Price and a pro to her. Lost 6 0 in five minutes. I was going A, C, D. I was just thinking absolutely everything. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm able to sort of transfer across to my coaching. So please don't make the mistake I did. The room I'm in now, I tried to practice my through it without getting a friend in, a critical eye, using technology. And by then, I just had the year. I think I understand how this is now. I think I'm as close to dark Titus as throwing the perfect dart right now. Down to one, it's overthinking. That's, um, that, 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 that's really interesting. But obviously, on yourself, like you say, the diary is as busy as it's ever been. And I remember when you first came down to the Super Series, how nervous you were, because I was obviously speaking to you on the, on the way down and whatever, but the way you've adapted to commentary and, and punditry, you must be delighted how you've made that step. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, something I want to do. Uh, I look at travel skills. Uh, how could I transfer uh, the knowledge in? You know, from 30 years working in an office in housing, you know, I've stood in front of you know, to a residence in uh, the problem and standing in for that. They're all doing for you. I mean, it doesn't get much tougher than that. So, you know, it's just for you to be in again, using words that have been used for a long time. Being the life of a dark player is that fantastic. Longevity very, very me, it was a short, sharp hit, really. Ten years of, you know, to highs. The video the world masters that, you know, every easy. And just part of me, when I won that um, Premier League pass, I made it, done it. All of you were sat off from there because you set and shy. Sounded like a really good answer, but it came through terribly <laughs> audio wise. I think it was literally Mike Glenn. Yeah, you went you went all darky on us then, mate. Oh, I think we've lost we can't hear you now, mate. We've lost your audio. <laughs> one week, one week. <laughs> Uh, I think we've lost your audio, buddy. Don't don't worry about it, mate. No dramas. Thank thank you very much. We'll catch up in the week. We'll we'll get some. We'll get a sit down together. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll speak to you on Friday. Uh, everyone, that does a pleasure as always, mate. Thank you very much. We tried, everyone. Uh, Glenn, absolute top guy for coming on as always. Uh, look, technology happens. We've had it with Mace before as well. Um, but we are going to look ahead to the World Seniors Gob. First of all, the golden ticket. One shot at glory on Friday. Yeah, I'm quite intrigued by this one. Obviously, normally all of our qualifying events are over at least two events. This is a straight up one shot. You're in. I think it's interesting because obviously everybody that that doesn't qualify is pretty much looking to, to play in the Open Series on in the evening and on the Saturday as well. So being in the environment where the TV tournament is taking place and being next to it and almost seeing what you're missing out on as well might just be that inspiration to those that don't quite make it to, to step it up ahead of the Masters and, and the match play later in the year. But I think Glenn was bang on earlier. It is the worst possible draw for Phil Taylor. Oh, oh, 
because you, you, you potentially got someone winning. I mean, I'm not sure how many matches you're going to have to win. I don't know how many people are in it, but you, you're hitting someone, or you're getting someone absolutely on form, the most on form dart player in that tournament, without a doubt, because because yeah. nobody else there has won that many competitive games 24 hours before with their yeah. confidence up. But like it, it's it's whoever comes through that is going to be very very dangerous. And obviously the entries are going to be geared towards that as well. Look, normally we get a lot of people entering the World Championships and that might drop off a little bit afterwards because to play in a World Championship means a lot to more people. But the minute the draw came out the way it did and it's a chance to play the greatest dart player of all time on stage, on TV, there were people jumping at the chance to, to be there and get that crack at it. So there's that extra incentive to go up there and cause that upset over the greatest of all time, in, in my opinion. And, and there are players that have... Like, Colin McGarry will be absolutely chomping at the bit to get another shot off Phil Taylor because he, in my opinion, he was favourite for that match at the Circus Tavern and he didn't play the way that he can, the way that people that have been around the tour and the way that you see these events week in, week out, know Colin McGarry can. And I think he put that right ahead of this. You look at the likes of Darren Johnson with another crack in it. And the, the format will give you chances. You haven't got to worry about sets and deciding legs and that sort of thing. You've just got to keep plowing on. It's a race to 10 legs. You're going to get time and chances to <laughs> to catch up with Phil if he gets out in front of you, to put your foot down and get ahead of him and build that gap. And you haven't got to worry about key moments every five legs or every three legs or surviving or now I'm 2 nil down and actually my score's back to zero, which set play can do to you. And that we saw that during the World Championships as well, didn't we? It, not not so, not specifically with Phil, but generally ac across the seniors World Championships, we, we saw games turn at key moments, you know, sets and things that just weren't quite going the right way for someone. But then them getting a reset, you know, and being whereas it is this is very different, isn't it? It's just get out and run, string yeah. a few legs together, get a break at the right time, and you're away. On the golden ticket, Gob. Have you got numbers of how many are entered and how many games they're going to have to win to to take the golden ticket? No, not yet. I'll tell you <laughs> what I think, and I'm sure. I mean, if I'm, uh, this has got to be a but I, when I first th heard about it, the first thing I thought was it's one of the cleverest marketing ideas I've ever heard because I'm going to guess most people that are going to travel to Blackpool on the Friday to play in that. They've travelled to Blackpool for the weekend and they're into darts. Probably going to get a ticket for the Saturday, aren't they? <laughs> like, if you're not... And I just thought, what a brilliant idea to sell the place out, to get loads of people into darts to go to Blackpool on the Friday in the hope of playing Phil Taylor. And they'll probably just come and watch while they're there, won't they? The players may or may not have the opportunity to, to get a weekend bundle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a genius idea. It's brilliant. Uh, yeah, we're not, no, no. we're not just pretty faces, mate. We're not just pretty faces. But look, you, you think about the interest this has drawn up. Leonard Gates is flying into the country tomorrow to playing the golden ticket. Yes. Uh, do we have any? So, what do, are you? Are we, we transatlantic have... for a qualifier? Who are the head? Do we have some headline names confirmed? I know that's unfair to everyone else. I didn't get a mention, but like Leonard Gates is a big. Who else is? I know Scott Mitchell said he was going, did he? Yeah, uh, Neil Duff. World champion. Um, I is the king of the year he's going? I, I, I'd be very surprised if any of Darren Johnson, Andy Jenkins, Mike Huntley, Dave Prince, Martin Turner, Robert Rickwood. I know Jim McEwen's going. Paul Hogan, uh, Wayne Jones, Brian Dawson. Matt Clark is in fantastic form right now. It's only Richie Housen that denied him a spot at the World Championships in the final qualifying event. That opened the door for Andy Jenkins instead. Matt Clark has since made two lots of Champions Week at the Super Series. So the King of Caution is is going. I believe so. Uh, nice, uh, everyone. No, we haven't spoken about Gary yet. We'll come on to that a little bit later on. Um, but the, the actual tournament itself. Obviously, the, the schedule is out for, for 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 round one, and to open up the show, it is a repeat of the World Seniors 
World Championship final as Robert Thornton takes on Richie Howson. Yeah, I mean, traditionally at tournaments, you might get the, the defending champion open up. We didn't do that in the World Championship to Robert Thornton. We went with that Friday night super session instead and really build up the, the circus tavern atmosphere. But to open up with with Robert game number one in the repeat of that world championship final is it, just, it's just massive. But Richie's playing some great darts again, made it to finals night of the super series last week. Robert made it all the way to the final and lost to Matt Clark. These guys are taking this proper serious now, proper, proper serious. And Richie will want to, to change that record. Robert will want to have this title to his trophy collection because he's won nearly everything else um, that we've got to offer. Obviously the only one that he didn't win, was the Masters, and he'll be out for that as well at, at some point this year. Um, you can't rule out David Cameron at all. Martin Adams, look, it's only three matches. Only three matches. If Wolfie gets going, we know what he's more than capable of. It's just a really, really enticing field. Yeah. So, we'll preview this as we do every other. I would like... What is it best of in round one? Uh, round one is best of 19, first to 10. And then the semis and the final are both best of 25. So, Thornton against Housen. Where are we going? What are we all thinking? Chat room, get involved as well. Ah, uh, I think it goes the other way. And I think Richie Housen gets it done. I just think it was one of like I watched a lot of darts, and that that match was one of the most like genuinely gripping matches. I like I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I thought Richie Housen had an amazing tournament. Like he's played some unbelievable darts in the last 18 months, two years. Um, I just think he'll get his own back. I think um yeah, it, it's it's not for if it was further into the tournament, maybe not. But I, yeah, I, I I think you'll I think Richie Alston will go. I'll get it done. What's it best of, God? Ten. Nineteen. First of ten. Ten eight. We're going deep. See, I like both of these, and it's an absolute stink of a draw. If if you ever spend any time reading these people. But I didn't back Thornton for the World Championships. And when I worked with him in an exhibition a few weeks later, he was asked, we were, we were discussing pundits not backing certain people to win events. And Thornton asked myself and my Edgar who we'd back to win it pre-event. And we both said we didn't back Thornton. <laughs> uh, and he was like, you're both idiots. If it's a TV event, I'm up for it. I'm rare for it. So I think I'm going to have to go with Thornton based on the fact that he's warned me about backing against him because he's just going to turn up. Um, so I'm going to say 10-7. Look, I, I agree with your sentiment there. I love Richie Housen to bits. But I just think that put the lights on, flick the red button to say you are on air, and Robert Thornton turns into a different animal. You, you have to get ahead of him early in these seniors' events. Yeah. The, um, the only time he's actually been under any sort of pressure is the Masters when... Cameron got at him early. Yeah. Everything else, he's built up a big lead early on. Whether that be, he's never lost the opening set in the World Championships. He's now won that back to back. He's running hard. He, he just got out and steamrolled people. If he gets on a roll, he's a little bit of a juggernaut in, in, in this field. He's, he's just incredibly difficult to stop if he gets going. Yeah. And I, I just think he'll have a little bit too much under the lights for Richie. I'm going to go 10 7 as well. Um, just before we go on, um, who was it that asked? Harry asked, why is it in the afternoon? Because that was the slot that Channel 5 had. Simple as that. And look, yeah. getting, the, getting the seniors on terrestrial TV is absolutely huge. So it was like, that's what they're offering. You rip your arm off and you run with it. And it means you can we'll take get, your kids. We'll get done on the Sunday before the England game as well. Yeah. Yeah, there is, um, there, there, there is that. Um is there any odds on this? I think the odds will come out once we know who the golden ticket is. Yeah. yeah. Um, David Cameron against Kevin Painter. Uh, Kevin Painter, one of the um, picks that was announced after or just before the World Seniors final against the Masters champion, David Cameron. 
this is just as tight. This is for me. This is this is so either way. I think the way that Kev played at times at, at Perfley at the tavern again was magnificent. Um, he's got that bit of swag back. There's one celebration I can't get when he just puts his hands on his hips and starts waddling towards <laughs> where the fans are. It, there was absolutely no animosity or no angst between him and Mark Dubridge. But that game was just full of celebrations and big show-off emotions. It was it was fantastic to watch. Um, Cameron, it's a little bit hard to judge David Cameron because heading into the World Seniors World Championship, we had the PDC World Championships. Since then, I've not really kept up with any CDC. And he was beaten by Richie in his last trip over here. So I'm a little bit hesitant to swear out of the way. I know Kev's been doing a lot of exhibition work in the last couple of weeks putting in a lot of hours. So I'm actually going to go painter here. I'm going to say we lose one of our two champions. The phrase you were looking for is painter was prancing like a peacock around the <laughs> tavern. That is, yes, that was the, that was the verbiage, wasn't it? Um, um, I'm, I think we're going to end up disagreeing everyone here. Um, yeah, I've just seen a lot. I think, so some of it is just the amount, you've seen a lot more seniors than I have. Um, some of the timings are cat for me that I, I I struggle to keep up with everything. What, what I've seen a lot more of David Cameron in the last couple of years than I have of Kevin Painter for various reasons, and and I think therefore I naturally just I've seen some good from him. Uh, I've seen him play some really good stuff. Um, I think it's a ten. I'll, do you know I'll go ten eight again because you spoke so highly about Kevin Painter, so I'll go ten eight. I think Kevin Painter has looked really, really good recently. And I just think that he's put he's put in a lot of graft for this. I think Painter gets the job done. I'm going to go 10-6. I just think he finds an extra gear for for this one. Uh, Phil Taylor against the golden ticket. We can't do. However, I think Phil Taylor loses to the golden ticket winner. And I I think it depends if we get a massive upset. Because let's be like, if we're honest, we could get like it's 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 funny one in it because we could see Scott Mitchell come through. We could see any one of probably ten to fifteen other players off that seniors order of merit top end that that could put a really solid performance up against Taylor. Or we could get a complete pudding that just manages to find however many games on the Friday. And and also, you also can't predict how much someone's ass is going to fall out if they're playing Phil Taylor on. Because let's be honest, you could have someone who's never been on the telly before in their life and their first time is on the telly against Phil Taylor, with everyone they've ever met and played darts with, texting them all night the night before and all morning. And you can't predict how... how like, they're, they're, let's be honest, there, there are 10, 15 players on that, you know, top end, of the, you know, who, who we know for certain, if they get on, like, they'll be fine upstairs. There's also any, any number of unknown quantities who, you know, they've never been on TV before. You're playing Phil Taylor and your ass falls out. Uh, well, McGarry's well, been there and done that, and I still think there was that hesitation about playing Phil at the Circus Tavern. Yeah, to be fair, Mace is in, and I'll never forget it. One of the interviews that we did early on when I first started getting into this, and Mace gave the best line ever, you can't practice shit in yourself. <laughs> well, that's, 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 my, that's my view on it. Me, it's that... stuck with me to this day, and I think it's absolutely true. You can practice all you want. You can put in all the work, but like you said, you can't practice shit in yourself. But, but I think, and he'd be dead right, but there is a group of people, you know, let's be honest, the names that we know who are going to, to that golden ticket event, who, who, who wants it, you know, who, you know, yeah, they, you, you could, I mean, you know let, let Leonard Gates gets through, Scott Mitchell gets through, a list of, you know, the, their ass isn't going to fall out, but there is, you've got the potential there. And it would be an amazing story, you know, never been on TV before, never won sod all, but manages to get to a position where they can play Phil Taylor on the telly. But phew, loads of pressure. I mean, I'm looking at the rest of the top 10. I, th I think McGarry with a second crack would have a go. I think Darren Johnson might go close as long as he doesn't start prattling around on social media again. I think Andy Jenkins would, would be comfortable enough now. Look, will he produce that level is a different argument. But will he bottle it? No. 
Mike Huntley I've got concerns with. I love Mike to pieces and he's a fantastic dart player, but that game against Keith Della was was not one on, on who was the best dart player. 100%. Right now, Mike Huntley is a better dart player than Keith Della. He just lost his way up on that stage. Dave Prince will be comfortable enough. Martin Turner, I think, would be okay. Recent winner on the Isle of Man. Robert Rickwood, I think, will be fine. Jim McEwen, I think, will be fine. Paul Hogan, I think, will be fine. You look at the likes of Wayne Jones, Brian Dawson, all been on TV before. Matt Clark, I think, he'd be fine. Alan Norris is throwing some fantastic darts right now. Don't rule him out. You look further down, Gary Robson, Daryl Fitton. Then you've got the likes of Leonard Gates and um, Scott Mitchell, who obviously don't rank as high because they're pretty new to the system. There's plenty of ability there that would fancy a crack at Phil Taylor. I think it will be either Neil Duff or Leonard Gates. And both of those matches, and this is like this is the beauty of both of those matches are matches that I would one hundred percent, you know, make sure I, I'm granted, you know, I'm going to be in the room, which is mint. But you know, if it was if I was potting around on the afternoon with the kids, I'd make sure I was in front of the telly to watch it. Yeah. Um, so last game, Martin Adams against Trina Gulliver. I think we might all agree on this one. Yeah, just again, just on you know what what we know we can and have seen from Wolfie in recent times. We we know we've seen some unbelievable, even you know even recently some unbelievable stuff on the TV. Um, I just think he'll have too much for Trina in this one. Uh, ten. Well, I feel like I'm a bit of a dick after ten four. 10 3, I'm going for. Oh, I'm more of a dick than me then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got 10 6, I think. I am going Scotty, though. Look, I, I had to go back and go through all the footage. I rewatched the Theatre Headman game of there. I don't think Trina played as bad as she did in your memory at the, at the World Championships, just gone. I think she played a very, very difficult to play against Dennis Harbour. Yeah, quite possibly. And look, Wolfie isn't rapid by any stretch of the imagination, but you can get into more of a rhythm against Martin Adams than you can Dennis Harbour. And I think that will help her game and her performance. Yeah, no, that's, fair. That's, that, that's fair enough. Is that the order that we have it in, Gob? Is that draw bracket order? So semi-finals will be... Either Thornton or House and against Cameron and Painter. Yeah, because it's seeded, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Now you're testing me. The image that the image they put out on when they released the draw had Robert yeah. Thornton seeded one, Phil Taylor two, Adams three, and Cameron four. So looking at them arranged like that in the bracket, I'm pretty sure that they are. Um, they're the that's the, that's the bracket going forward, if you like. Yeah, but we balls one up when we did it live. <laughs> to put it bluntly, all right. Then. <laughs> I won't ask you for your finalists. Who, are you on, going? Gonna... who wins who, it? Who wins it? Who wins the seniors champion of champions? Here's a bold pick for you. I've said it all day, Scott Mitchell. Not only has Dan named the golden ticket winner, he's given you the winning the whole thing. Now that there is a pick. I like that. <laughs> that, that, that that's big and bold that he's gone that big. Dan's pick might not even make it to the line. <laughs> not even turn up. <laughs> Fortune favours the brave. Yep. Yeah. I'm still annoyed I can't find the bloody graphic. Um Cameron and Painter in that half of the draw. Yeah, Cameron and pa Ke so we've got Thornton against Housen, Cameron against Painter, top half, bottom half, Phil against Golden Ticket winner, Martin Adams against Trainer. Yeah, I've got Martin and Phil the other way around, but yeah. Um, 
I gotta go with the main man. <clears throat> Robert Thornton. I agree. I am going Robert Thornton just because of the animal he becomes on TV. I'm with you. Thornton it is. So there we go. Um, look, anything can happen as we know, but I quite like that. Um, this week and just gone players championship seven and eight boys. The action comes thick and fast in the PDC. As we know, um, they use the same venue. Um, as the challenge tour, the internet wasn't particularly great. I think Dan was using some of the internet in Teesside from Hildesheim as well. He was piping yeah. it over to make sure it was all good. Um, event number seven was won by Michael Van Gerwen, but apart from once, Michael didn't really play that well, did he? He kind of got away with it and just did enough to beat what was in front of him. He went berserk against Dirk in a really good game, but MVG's first ranking title of the year in Hildesheim. Yeah, it, I mean, he he played, I mean, he did play very well. The game against Dirk was outrageous. But, like, even, I mean, average 98 in the final, 96 in the semi, say 105 average again in the quarters, 95. So, you know, for the, the last four games of the day, his lowest average was 95. Um, he's he's played very well. I, I think it was, I think what it was, was Michael Van Gerwen doing Michael Van Gerwen things in that he played his best darts of the day against the player that played the best against him. If that if those words all fit together. <laughs> um, he, he, he picked his game up at the right time and, and did enough to win the matches that he played. It, it, it was it was a good showing from him, really good showing. I was I think the bigger story, I, it's funny, isn't it? Because I still don't think in this day and age, you know, Michael Van Gerwen wins a Pro Tour event is particularly, you know, we talked earlier on about what was and wasn't newsworthy. You know, I think that the, the biggest stories of the day are, are sort of, you know, Ratajski back in the semi-final, Bradley Brooks in the semi-final, Mickey Manson in the quarter-final. I think there's, you know, there's other talking points, really. It's just, you know, another title for Michael Van Gerwen. Well done, Michael. Oh, yeah, completely. I mean, we're just getting that out of the way. Like we say, the, the biggest stories were in the semi-finalists. Spoiler alert, Christoph Ratajski had a good day today as well. But there were signs yesterday, God, that the Peagle was just starting to turn the cog and find some form again. He's back. I've never heard anyone say Peagle before. I nearly choked on my coat. <laughs> <laughs> I literally nearly spat it all over the room. I don't know what it was. It just tickled me enough there to get me going. Peagle, love it. Um, But Bradley Brooks, after a difficult time, been fighting to keep his card and, and everything like that, his first Pro Tour semi-final and, and played solid all day. Yeah, really consistent, and he's a he is a player at the minute that that needs that. You know, he he needs to start putting some results together. He is, you know, in the tour card race, he is some way off safety. Um, you know, a, a, a bit. In fact, I'll tell you how much how far off he is. Where is he? He's seventy ninth on twenty six grand, and John O'Shea's in sixty fourth on forty one. So he, he's he is a lump of money off retaining his tour card, but really, really good positive signs. We know he's got the game. He's got an outstanding game. Um, just needs to find it with a bit more consistency on, on, on the floor. Yeah, some numbers there from Carla. Chizzy's A game, we all know is outstanding, but we saw it today. It's the drop from the 105, 106 to the 88 that he's having at the moment is is the concern for, for Chizzy. The A game is, is, is outstanding. Um, also, a last 16 for Cam Crabtree, a late call, or not a late call-up, but a replacement. Um, we've seen him do blistering things at the Super Series as well. Ross Montgomery making a last 16. Mickey Mansell making a quarter-final um, as well. 
However, however, today, <laughs> Players' Championship 8 belongs to one man and one man only. The fish of them. The fish of them. <laughs> Gary Anderson wins a ranking title for the first time in about three years. And I say that one Barnsley 2020. And, 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 and I'm going to tell another little story here. I say ranking title for a reason. Because although he hates the Premier League, Mr. Garwood called them TV titles last week when we were sat in a car. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'm going to throw you under that great big London bus. Well done. <laughs> no, but in, in all serious, that this has been coming though. We've seen signs that Gary Anderson is ready to fire. Well, for me as well. Like I, I did. I know you two guys covered it like all day today, so you've probably repeated all this out. But I dropped in and out of the stream between meetings and had it on while I was driving. I was sort of just just dipping in where 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 I got chance. What I what I couldn't quite believe, or what took me very pleasantly by surprise, was I hadn't worked. I didn't know what the I hadn't followed Gary's route to the final. So then when I sort of went and had a look, and I went. Like Jimmy Hughes, oh, yeah, fair enough. Yale Klassen, oh, nice, yeah. Then you start to go, Luke Humphreys, Dimitri Vandenberg, Jan Van Veen, Gerwin Price. You think, like, that. not only has he won that event, but his route to that event today was ridiculous. Yeah. Because not only has he beaten incredibly talented, because, you know, obviously Gary's very, very talented, but he's beaten players in unbelievable form who play unbelievably well on the floor? You know he's got you know got rid of, he's got rid of Luke Humphreys, Gerwin Price, Jamie Hughes has been playing brilliant pro tour events of of late. Um, Jan Van Veen we know is 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 a tremendous player. Just yeah, re, as I say, I didn't get to follow it. I didn't get to watch any streams or anything. But yeah, absolutely superb news for Gandalf fans. And well, I think he hit. 34 180s across the day, which was one off joining the record with Chizzy on Dirk. We saw 170 finishes. He threatened the nine, God knows how many times. And more importantly, he is in the green in every single race for you know what going. We're not talking about nines. Oh, yeah. God missed a nine as well on one of his boards. St. Patrick's Day weekend as well. Um, However, the, the the other stories around look great for Gary, and no doubt we'll we'll come on to him more again. But Ratajski again, another final. Gerwin Price getting to a semi final. He's back into the top sixteen on the Pro Tour Order of Merit semi finalist. Ricardo Petretsko is doing bits at the moment, and we saw him the back end of last season just starting to blossom and develop, gents. And now he's turning into a real hope as well, and another one for this German conveyor belt. That seems to be coming through right now, Gob. Yeah, I mean he's not in the nowhere near in the conversation for the World Cup team, um, but he's another fantastic player from from Germany coming through. Looks solid. The, the elbow part of his action, the follow through looks great. I have concerns about the, the grip, but I guess that that works for him. And he just doesn't look. He was shaking his head at times while he was averaging 102 in that semi final. <laughs> And then he looked at the averages at the iPad after the game and, and look, there was a little bit of youth in there where he just went, <laughs> as if to say, bloody hell, I've just been done rotten here by Ritaisky, who's averaged 109. Yeah, yeah, I've been battered. think I've had a mare. But actually, in hindsight, I've done all right. Um, going down into the quarterfinals, again, there's a real fine prospect and hope for Dutch darts here at the moment. We've seen him in close hand at the Super Series Live League. Jean Van Veen is becoming a star and becoming a star rather quickly at the moment. There's big averages from him. Um, he looks really good. Look, again, there's question marks about the grip and the action, but it works for him. But in terms of numbers that we are seeing from Jean Van Veen, there is an awful lot to like. Yeah, I mean, you look at the list of names he's beaten in the last few weeks or come up against. And then you compile a list of 
the best players, the top 10 best players from the last five years, not necessarily right now, but the last five years. And he's wiping out all of them. It looks fantastic. There's absolutely no fear. His scoring power is ridiculous, which is strange because he gets the darts to lie down so weird. As you'd expect him to be able to use them, but he's working it magnificently. Um, yeah, look, he looks like another one that's just going to keep getting better and better, which is a scary thought. Yeah. Um, Jeff, this one that I was going to do. Concerned about the viability of his shirt. If you want about um, Ricardo Petrescu, uh yeah, I don't see that shirt lasting too long for TV purposes because um, of a of a Pokemon character that's on it. <laughs> that's his nickname. <laughs> Yeah, they'll hammer him. Yeah. yeah. He'll, get away, he'll get away with it in the, in the floor tournaments. But um Yeah, put 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 him on put him on a TV audience. I don't think it's going to be allowed somehow. Uh but you also James Wilson, Jamie Dodger got undone oh, by a biscuit company. You think what well, one of the biggest gaming companies in the world are gonna do to you? Yeah, uh, completely. Um so also uh Brendan Dolan hit a nine data this weekend, gets in the quarterfinals, quarter final for Luke Woodhouse. Uh, Ross Smith continues his good form um, as well. Um, shout out to the Polish players over the last couple of floor events as well. There's been a ridiculous level from them. Look, Ratajski, we obviously know about, um, but Kachuk playing some fabulous stuff. Radek Sadansky, we've seen uh, Sebastian Bilowetsky, what he can do. It's a real hot bed of darts right now. Yeah, and the PDC needs to capitalise on that. Prontissimo. How good yeah. would a Euro Tour in Krakow be? That's yeah, one hundred. That's what we need. We need we need events quickly. We need to get them booked. Krakow <laughs> needs to hear one hundred eighty. <laughs> <laughs> Just not she some. Was, God. I found that on Spotify, and it's now on our dance team Wednesday night playlist. Nice. Um, also, some some notable shout outs as well from players that we've. Um, Seen um, Owen Bates getting to a last 32. Um, we've seen him being a pro tour call up in the UK, but obviously, went over there for the challenge tour. He's done done bits, um, as well. Whilst we're on the pro tour, who have you got concerns about right now? I'm gonna throw mm -hmm. one in, the, I'm gonna throw one in the mix because I think he's had a, a very poor start to the year for him. Is Big Vincent. Um, I'm concerned for me because there's at least 22 Pro Tours left, plus all the women's series. And chances are I'm going to stream at least 14 of those with you. And I'm just concerned for my sanity. Uh, there's a, there's a couple point? of... I think there's a couple that are just aren't doing it. Like, it's not like miles away. Um, Menci Shulevich has done nothing at all. Absolutely nothing across eight events. Adrian Lewis has done nothing across eight events. We've talked about Devon. We sort of know where he's at. But um, the other one, the, other, the ones that took me probably the most by surprise um, is Alan Souter. I think in terms of looking for big names or, or, or players that we expect a lot more from that have done absolutely nothing this year in the Pro Tour, it, it, I'd say probably those three men, men sure, um Lady Lewis and 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 probably Alan Souter, I expected a lot more from. Did a grand and a half Alan Souter in eight events. There's a cup in the chat room as well. Um, Daryl Gurney, the results on the pro tour might not have been good, but he's, he's qualified for all six Euro tours. So, look. He's not playing badly. Um, yeah. Again, Ricky Evans, again, he's playing well. But I feel not, like he's playing really well, Ricky. He's but just not necessarily picking involved. up results, but he's, he's playing playing some good stuff. Um, he, he's, he's, good. The one that's done, he's done a grand and a half in eight events. Yeah. Um, someone that last year obviously was a fill-in and a step-in, but Scott Williams has not had the electric start to this season that he had last year. I, I feel like Scott needs a point to prove or he needs some, he needs the bit between his teeth a little bit. And I feel like he doesn't have that. Now he's got a tour card. He's, he's pretty set. He's going to be in 
the world's come the end of the year pretty much. He's going to keep his tour card because if you've done that after one year, you're almost definitely going to do that through two. I feel like it's just a little bit going through the motions right now, whereas you put a bit more effort in, reach the TV events on the on the races, which is the next step for him, and, and go even further. Um, there are some others. So there's some big names I'm concerned about results-wise. I don't remember the last time I saw a deep run from Danny Knopper. I might be well off for that one. He won a Pro Tour this year. Of course. Yeah. Other than that, he won one the first weekend, didn't he? Yeah. He's not going to call you John. Going to call you John Part after he said that. Very young. Um, Joe Cullen. Danny Noppert's fifth on the Pro Tour order of merit. <laughs> Classic Joe, gob. Joe Cullen. He's in trouble. He's in trouble. He's in a world of trouble. Yeah, in a world of trouble. <laughs> Where's that copper burger? He's fifth on the order of merit. He's in. He's in massive trouble. I, I think Joe Collins in trouble. Since the, didn't get the Premier League call up again, was obviously very disappointed with that. You can tell by his social media coverage. Um, was the player on tour last year that was winning more games of a lower average than anybody else. He spent an awful lot of time last year playing with his B game, has now been handed more disappointment and hasn't reacted to it in a way that lifted his game. I was going to say that. Is the hangover for Joe Cullen purely Premier League related, do you feel? I'm not sure, because like I said, he was winning a lot of games last year where he wasn't playing well or he was winning with his B game. And there's only so long you're going to get away with that in the PDC. I think the dip came a bit... I, I think... I think he dipped before the Premier League selection. Um, if he hadn't, I don't think the Premier League selection would have been as, you know, it, it wouldn't have been in doubt. I think if he, you know, if he hadn't have had a dip and gone off the boil, um, I don't think his game is at is is close really to where it's at when he was in the Premier League. Um, it's, it's not a mile away, but it's not there. It's not. It's not. It's not consistent, and he isn't winning. He's losing games that he would have won this time last year. And then at the other end of the scale, two players that we were quite excited about when they got tour cards that I don't think we'll have them come the end of the year: um, Connor Scott and Kevin Benes. Benes hasn't done a lot. Kevin Benes has not done a lot wrong today. He's averaged one hundred and three. I mean, hammered by Dave Chisnell, who's averaged 117. But it, it's just not happening for him. And I don't think it's happening for Connor Scott either. We're, we're seeing a few more results creep in. Uh, I think he made it to round four of the UK Open. Um, <clears throat> it, it's just not impactful enough right now to be in contention to keep that card at the end of the year. My concern for Connor, I know he listens to the show, and is he changed man or he signed for a manufacturer for the first time. And although They've made him a similar dart. It's not the dart that he had all the success with to get yeah. him to where he was. Yeah. And we've seen it happen to a lot of players that have moved manufacturers that that grinding period, that settling period, trying to find the right dart again takes time. And I think the move and the switch was at the wrong time for Connor. You want to hit the ground running, don't you, with, with what you've Co got? Co correct. And look, we saw him hit some absolute huge averages. Um, and that was with... He used to use a Simon Whitlock dart. His new dart is based off of that. But he used to throw the the bodged up Simon Whitlock dart, as I called it, with the horrible scallop in the middle. Ooh. It was like two darts forged together. But it worked for Connor. And I just think that maybe he hasn't quite found that... <clears throat> set up again yet yeah I think you're probably right on that but you but more right on on the timing of it just not it's it's not timed right and he hasn't hit the ground running and, and it hasn't all synced together has it yeah um but yeah no I, I agree that I think they're both both in some 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 trouble I'm just looking at the pro tour order of merit or sorry the race for the the card list as well Lou Williams Kept his tour card last year by a backdoor entry to the Worlds. 
through the, the, the dev tour. Um, he's, he's in a world of trouble, I think, because one, he's just not playing well. And, and two, I think he's been overtaken on the dev tour as well by players now. So I'm not sure that that's there. I also think as well, Phil, just there are, there are players around him that that are in better form. You know, that, that like we've, you know, that if you look at the players that are just in and around him in that tour card race, you know, you got, well, two of them are, are, are players we've, you know, we've, we've spoken about today. Um, in, in Bradley Brooks, who's obviously, you know, he's put a bit of summit together. Petresco is, is one position beneath him on that race to a tour card. Um, Christoph Kachuk, we've spoke about, he's, you know, they're, they're all within a, a couple of grand of each other. So I think that it's, it's not just how he's playing everything else. It's just that those other players that he's embroiled with in, in, are all playing far better darts than he is at the minute as well. Yeah, so I'm just going the the cluster of players outside the green. I tell you, what, in no other sport has being in green meant so much. <laughs> um, golf when, maybe. Yeah, when, golf maybe. Yeah, being in the green. <laughs> when you know, you know, but. You look at it, Richie Burnett, he's on the cusp. He's close to keeping his card, which would be a huge achievement. Labanowskis in trouble. Williams, Petrescu doing enough to, to potentially. Kevin Dukes in trouble. Ted Everts in trouble. Jeff Smith in trouble. Scott Waite, Steve Lennon, Jose Justicia, Joe Mernon, Bradley Brooks, Brian Roman, Rusty Jake, James Wilson, Devin Peterson. There's some big names Whilst that's just a, obviously a snapshot of, of, of the list as it is, I think the bigger picture is there are people in, in that block there moving in different directions. And there are people who are at the minute, you know, at event after event after event, the two are, are slowly pegging their way up. And other people who are just being dragged further and further back down. So I think there is quite a few moving parts in that. And we, we'll see more of it over, over the next few months. Yeah. Look, absolutely. But look, going back to the original point of the Pro Tour, Gary Anderson is oh. back. Andy staying for the Euro Tour qualifies tomorrow as well. Oh, well, we are spoiled, Gary. Rachel knows. Here's your, here's your flight details, Gary. You fly that and you don't fly back to there, so you have to stay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was the Pro Tour. Like we say, Euro Tour qualifiers tomorrow. Um, we're going to look ahead to the Premier League on the banks of the Tyne, Dan. We are going to Newcastle. But before we go, do you know, is this the last year? Is it, It's the utility it's called at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, this is well, more than likely. I don't think it's been 100 percent yet because there's all sorts of things when they build things like that, you know, just about things getting snagged and handed over and everything like that. So I, I don't think they, they've come out and said, this is the date. Um, and of course, the Premier League is relatively set in, you know, in what time of year yeah. it, it takes place. So, um, but potentially, there's a very good chance that this is the last year. What I know, as, as all the time I was growing up, it was the Metro Arena. That's where it used to be. Um, I think yeah. you're right, is utility. But yeah, the Metro Arena, it was for me growing up. Yeah, because there's a new a new arena, indoor arena in Gateshead. Yeah, which is just over the other side of the river. It's actually for in like to be completely honest, like easier to get to. The parking will be better. They'll be like it'll be great when it when once that's up and running. And I'm I'm told that it's going to be you know state of the art and everything's going to be amazing. The acoustics are going to be amazing. Everyone will get a great view and it'll be comfortable and be loads of hospitality. So yeah, exciting stuff. Um. Well, if it is the last way, what a perfect way. First of all, is Chris Dobie going to walk on to local hero? If he doesn't, it, it's it's the it's the silliest missed opportunity. Because like it's well, even as a Newcastle fan, like it, it it's difficult to understate how much that song means in that city. Like it's 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 absolutely like if you go up there on you know any day of the week you wander through the shopping centre or something there'll be like an owl bloke with a saxophone and play it all day. Um, it, it's like it is literally the it's on the news. So our local news, ITV's 
Time T's new, you know, the sort of half fives news program you get every day. That's the theme tune for that as well. It's I, I, it's just a mad missed opportunity if he doesn't. Unbelievable try. And of course, it's also written and performed by Mark Knopfler, who's another Geordie. So it like it needs to be. Um so yeah, but you're still short in football, ain't you, Dan? <laughs> 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 yeah, dread, dread, dreadful. I mean, I, I can't remember where we are in the Premier League. It's, it's almost worrying. Um, you know, I wish I was. I mean, I, I probably wish I'd be. I don't know. Maybe where Liverpool. Oh no, I'm on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, it's a repeat set of fixtures, and look, we can't blame the PDC for this. Um, they didn't know this, this would happen. We can. It's a freak occurrence, isn't it? It's a freak yeah. accident. You can't just that stupid. <laughs> Look, we're, we're in agreement that we don't like the format. I get that, but you can't, they, you can't predict that the fixtures they put in Nottingham will be repeated because of the way the league table would be. No, so if, if, if you think we've had, we've had seven weeks, and if any game, any one game in those seven weeks has a different result, then this doesn't happen. Like it, it is yeah. a bit of a freak. Like the maths yeah. is a bit random. Like it, it shouldn't happen because it's too. The odds of it happening are ridiculous, but it's just where we, you know, it just so happened that going into night seven, the odds, instead of being, you know, million to one, ended up being like, you know, fairly, you know. Yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah, actually um, <laughs> so first up, we have Michael Van Gerwen against Peter Wright, then Nathan Aspinall, Dimitri Van der Berg, your Welsh Affair, Gathering Price against Johnny Clayton, and then Michael Smith against Chris Doby. So, game number one, repeat or revenge? Uh, me, uh, repeat. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think I can't see anything other than the same thing happening again. I suppose the other question would be: Does Peter Wright continue with these darts, or does he go back to a straight barrel diamond coated dart that we all know works? I, I have given up trying to predict in any way Peter Wright's approach to what darts he selects and chooses. I mean, didn't he? I, mean, I, I know he says loads of things, in, in, but has he not said that, has he not been quite firm on the fact that he's adamant he's going to stick with them? He's put everything else in a box and thrown it away. And, and No, that, that was the very bait darts. No, that oh, that, 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 that was the straight darts. He said he'd thrown everything else away and then I'm guessing the bin men didn't collect, so he then, then went and picked them up and started playing again. Brilliant. Um, no, I mean, who knows? I mean, but the thing is, he just like if you want me to, if he comes out and he starts, yeah, and he comes out and then we see something with a straight barrel that's golden shit and, and with a reasonably familiar setup on the back end, then you, I might, you know, I might think, oh, yeah, because he, because let's be honest, if he turns up and likes what he's throwing, he, he could just throw something utterly ridiculous, couldn't he? He'd go on average 109 and, and, and smash someone to bits, but it's, it's not looking likely. Yeah, I'd go in 6-3, Michael Van Gerwen. I, yeah, I, I agree. Same score, 6-3, MVG. Nathan Aspinall against Dimitri Vandenberg. Last time out, 6-4, Dimitri. What are we saying in this one? Repeat or revenge? Revenge. There's no way Aspinall can start as badly and as slowly as he did last week. I am inclined to agree. I don't, yeah, I, and I don't like just sort of going the same. But like, I think you know, uh, yeah, I think, um, I think Aspinall will benefit from the fact that he's playing the same opening. The guy that beat him last week, he's got to open against tonight. I just think he's got the mindset of a player that will benefit for that, and he'll come in, you know, hard and fast. And 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 and, and I think he'll he'll get him done six three. Uh, I'm going revenge as well. I think Aspinall puts it right and hits his doubles. World Cup teammates collide. Johnny Clayton had chances but couldn't get them done. I guess he went on to win the night. What are we saying in this one? Repeat. Gezi again. He's playing good. He's played well. I mean, he's played well all week in the play in the tour events yesterday and today. He's he's looked good. Um I, I just think there. Is, I do think there's still something missing from Johnny Clayton's game at the minute. I think it's exasperated when he plays on 
telly in big arenas and it will be a big loud arena on Thursday. I think it's a 6-3, Gezi. Revenge. Ooh. I still think something's going to click for Johnny very, very soon. He's looked brilliant in patches. The form built itself back up. The, the B game's back there again right now. And actually, this may have been very early, but from the bits I remember of the game, Johnny was was holding his own. He was broken in leg nine, I think it was, and never really recovered. It was it was just one of those moments where Gezi did something that little bit out there. I, I don't think Johnny's a million miles away. So that means that Johnny ne was never in any, ne never led once because like Chris Davy was in trouble. <laughs> Um, I'm going revenge, but my reasoning is I'm concerned that Gezi's going to be burnt out come Newcastle. So look, Wednesday, he was in Nottingham. Played Thursday. Nottingham to Swansea for the exhibition. Swansea to Germany. He's staying tomorrow to play the Euro Tour qualifiers. Unless they're done early, the likelihood is he won't cut, he won't fly till Wednesday. So he's probably flying, if not direct to Newcastle. Someone will have a car for him at Heathrow or Gatwick or Luton, Stansted, whatever in London, to drive into Newcastle. I just think there could be a little bit of burnout is my worry. Potentially. Yeah, you could be right. Uh, so, for that reason, I'm going 6-4 Johnny. Then, the last game. Do. Do the locals get their dream and do they sing their man to victory, Dan? Does Doby? Do yeah. 6-5 six, 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 goes all the way. Um, I think, so, like, you've seen, well, you were there, I think, Phil, when, when Doby was there as a contender. Oh, it's unreal. Um, unreal. I, my view on it is that the even the reaction, whilst the crowd was insane, I even think the view is, is, very, is a bit different this time around because he was there as a contender. I think this time he's, he's in the eyes of the city of Newcastle there. He's there on merit. He is a Premier League player. And he's representing Newcastle, and and I think it will be an. And I appreciate Michael Smith. He's he's very much used to playing in, you know, busy, loud, hostile, potentially environments. But I, I don't think anyone will have potentially seen, um, certainly in the last few years. Granted, you know, post COVID. Um, an arena like we'll see on Thursday. I think it will. I'm, 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 I think it'll put Cardiff completely to shame. In terms of huge, huge statement from Dan Simpson there. Happy to, happy to, like happy to live and die by. I, I think, I think you, you put that side by side with Cardiff. I think, I think it'll be riotous in that. Um, and I think it goes all the way. And I think it's a, it's a Chris Doby six five win. Great speech. Thank you. You get Gob's vote. But you're complete crap. <laughs> the only reason this is going to stand out this weekend is because they're going to flood the place with tears. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think Michael does it. But again, started really slowly. Um, well, felt like he. Well, actually, I don't remember the first bit. I remember the comeback towards the end and one more leg and he would have had him. And I think if Michael gets out in front of him early, shuts that crowd down a little bit. Yeah. Um, Doby has to break early. Like in, yeah. in order to, if he's got any chance in that game to win, and I, I'm always going to pick him for that match, but if he's, got a chance, if he's got any chance to win, he's got to break really early. First, I also think Smith's had the week off. He's not played this weekend. He's avoided all of the hassle. Doby has been in Germany for three days without any luggage, without his darts. Without his darts, his darts. With different darts. <laughs> if he is he playing tomorrow as well? Yeah. He, so he's got to play again tomorrow. Then he's in the same travel situation, maybe not as badly as Gezi. Yeah, but night in his own right. bed, that's the, that's the difference because he's at home in his own bed. Yeah. He? But he has then got to go home, pick up a set of his darts and get back on the practice board as soon as possible 
to get used to playing with his darts again. I don't know what he's throwing with this weekend, but they haven't been eat. They can't unless somebody's carrying a spare set or something similar. But there's still going to be those little intricacies where something in the back of your mind isn't right because they're not yours. Looking at his averages, I think he's been borrowing Peter Wrights. <laughs> <laughs> I am agreeing, and I can't believe I'm saying this, with God. Ta-da. I just think that the week Dobie's had maybe a little bit too much. I'm going Michael Smith, who's had a nice week at home feeding the chickens in, in St. Helens. So I'm going Michael Smith. But who wins overall in Newcastle? Who beats who in the final? Well, this isn't going to shock anyone. Is water wet? But Chris Dolby beats Michael Van Gerwen in the final. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you, you've no idea the temptation I've got at, at telling you what score I think he's going to do him because... <laughs> Because we haven't mentioned tonight, have we, that for the first time ever, Michael Van Gerwen was whitewashed in the Premier League. And it won't happen again because Chris Dobby will beat him 6-1 in the final. He'll get one. He'll get one. <laughs> I'm just chuckling because we had Dozer on earlier. This used to be Dozer every week. And now it's Dobie every week. It's like... <laughs> Can I latch on that is remotely close to me geographically in terms of yeah. a dark? There'll be a, there'll be a few years there'll be a, a few years time where like there'll, yeah there'll be a catastrophic like, everyone will be, I'll just be sat here going please Ryan Joyce like it's got to be Ryan there's no one left. <laughs> <laughs> there's nobody else left. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. He never gets it easy, does he? Uh, Van Gerwen beats Clayton. Ooh, pick. Smith beats Van Gerwen. There we go. So that is it. And that will put us halfway... In the Premier League, look, Michael Van Gogh's already there, as he's told the world, and that he is. Let's, let, let's be fair; the other seven are playing for three spots. Well, the other six, maybe. I'm not sure Peter Wright can make it. Mathematically, obviously, can, but I'm not sure he will. Um, so, also, whilst we're on the subject of stuff this week, I want to talk about the youngsters coming through that we've seen on the pro tour, your Cam Crabtrees, your Owen Bates. We've seen the the, the dev tour, your Jean Van Veens and the, the, the JDC. The sport is in a very good place coming through. This conveyor belt system that we've got from the JDC upwards is now really starting to pay dividends, boys. Some of the averages we're seeing from these kids are ridiculous. Yes. It's easy to forget, um, and I think it's easy done sometimes when you, you know, when you see it follow things through Darts Connect and you can't see people. You know, it's easy to forget how yeah. young some of the, you know, some of these guys are, and and, and we find ourselves talking about people, um, people like like we had a chat earlier about about people like Bielecki and and you know that 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 are doing. Like in terms of their performance, like they're coming out with some absolutely unreal performances in. And then it almost sort of jogs you. Remember, you think, oh, yeah, you know, like Dev Chu is he's, he's like, he's a kid. He's like, he's, some of these are children. Um, and, and when you look at, you know, when you, when you just sort of flick into the, um, in the Dev Tour order of merit and, and, and look at the top, you know, browse through the top 15, 20. I, there is some serious, serious talent in there. And, you know, I, I do appreciate that it is, it's rare that it really translates. You know, it, it, the, the ratio of people that, you know, can consistently keep themselves at the top end of the dev tour and then make a real attack on the pro ranks is, is, is you know, it's not a huge ratio. 
But there is some very, very exciting talent among that list of people. Scary talent. It is. And the, it's only going to make my opinion stronger that once these players, are, once these, these kids are, are, have with tour cards, they've been through enough of a process now that they are at that level. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Ten years ago, getting to the Dev Tour and picking up a, a tour card through that, your likes of even even before your, your Humphreys and your Van der Berg, that that wave just before that, they may have played county youth darts, but actually their first exposure to that sort of level would have been local tournaments, then it's straight to challenge to, uh, Dev Tour, then it's to the Pro Tour. They're big steps to make. Now mm. there are so many different avenues and so many smaller steps you can make and so many different organizations and banners you can go and play under that actually 16 year olds have got more experience than I've ever had already. And the minute they do go on to get a tour card, the fact they still potentially like, Henry Coates has just, he's played at Q school. He's on a challenge tour, etc. He's got seven, maybe eight years left on the dev tour. Bo Greaves is a world champion. She's got five and a half years left on the dev tour, if she so wishes it. Unless she makes top 32 in the world. Yeah. That, 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 I don't think they're going to scrap it completely because it builds up the numbers and the stats and everything that they can go and get sponsored for the dev tour. But there has to be some sort of change or some increment where once you've been a pro for X amount of time, regardless of where you are level-wise or anything like that, or however many years you've had a card or ranking-wise, it, it builds up. It cannot just remain the top 32. No, I, I, I agree. It's Yeah, it, do, it does need... It, it, it requires further... For want of a better word, the system requires further development, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, also, are we at the point now where the standard is that good, Gob, and, and Dan as well, that we see the qualifier for the World Youth Finals and then it's at Minehead? Is there a a genuine case now where more of it should be televised or streamed or whatever, not just the final to showcase this talent and, and get them, and also get them ready for what's coming. I think there's a, there's a commerciality element of that in terms of it being televised um, in that I'm not convinced that there is a market for that I, on that scale yet in the mainstream. I think the final serves very well at Minehead to kill that time between the semis and the final that ITV don't really know what to do with because they lack a bit of content. I, I think, though, that there's definitely scope for more PDC TV streaming Um Definitely. Like, we've seen some really good advancements with the PDCs streaming this year, new stuff with the UK Open, things like that. I definitely think there is scope to put more of, of it available to those that want to see it. But I still think as a as a product, which sport is, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think it, it's, it's a niche. Um, and I don't think there are markets in the mainstream yet. God, it looks like you're about to say something. I, I don't really know where to go with it. I, I don't think you can stream dev tours. I I'm just not sure that's right. The same way I don't think you can stream talent tours. One, there's a cost involved to it compared to how many subscribers you get. And two, for me, especially the dev tour, that environment is there for, for learning, for building. Look, it would be fantastic to watch some of these dev tour finals. And let's be honest, a lot of them are pro tour players and, and, and whatever else. But I guess the dev tour without being that guy, Dan, you probably know more about this than I do, would possibly have a safeguarding issue at some point as well with 16-year-olds playing. 
I know if you went through it'll be in the term yeah. conditions that you agree to it and that's yeah, sort of there, there, well there, there will there will be certain things, but in because of what they do, a lot of that you sort of have to just bypass and put to one side when you enter um sort of a, a structure within a sport because yeah. in, in terms of because uh, because a lot of that is about license and, and without being boring you get all sorts of issues with kids in care and their photographs go on facebook and all you know all these sort of things where things get shared out of yeah. when you compete in any sport you know if, if you go and swim or you go and do play cricket for your local county you have to sort of just Part of it is that is accepting that there is a particular interest in terms of media coverage and things like yeah. that. Um, so, and and I don't think it's a particular issue in terms. But I, for me only, I, I don't sort of. I and you, you know, in terms of the actual experience of it, far better than I do. I, I'm not sure whether if we can expose part of that. So, uh, for example, if you were to say on, on an event. We have a we have a, a stream board that goes live in the quarterfinals. So you're not showing the early stages of, of every tournament. And if someone's having a stinker, it's not there for the world to see. But you say, right, well, for two hours, we're gonna stream the quarters, the semis, and the final. And then I sort of think, well, if you do that, you're taking an element of it and, and then you're contributing to that that notion of it being a development. To it, you know, you are developing, and if you get into a quarter final of an event, you'll play on on a stream board. And I think if you can do that and say, "Well, we'll stream for two hours," you limit in terms of your cost. You know, you you, you limit that. You limit the exposure of, let's be fair, your weaker players or or your players that are in a bad run of form or anything like that. You, you are largely going to probably end up streaming players with a two account a lot, a lot regularly. That's That would be my approach. I, I'd pick a, a cut-off, whether that's last 16 quarterfinals, whatever that is, and say we'll stream for two hours of, the, of those games. And then I think you tick all the boxes. I guess the problem with the death is they double up on days. So whilst it would save costs in terms... Well, I'm not sure it would save costs because you still have to pay the people to be in the room. Or to be on the venue, so they still be taking day rates, but actually you'd only be getting two hours out of it here, two hours out of it there. Less used to being in an environment where they don't call out matches, so you have to be aware where your board official is and all of that sort of stuff. Very easy to get confused. Uh, Gary Anderson was meant to be on a streaming board earlier, and apparently there was no referee there, so they just started playing on a different board. So they put something else on the streaming board. Now, if pros can make that mistake, then 17 to 22 year olds that are oh, yeah and, and I'd say you yeah. understand the logistics far better than, than I. I you know it's, yeah. it's, uh, ultimately I just think it would turn into more hassle than it's worth for the exposure you might get the odd streaming game at the one thing I wouldn't mind the world youth championships when it gets to the last 96 put a board on there or or, or whatever um I think that I guess I'm at the same point as I am with things like the World Championship qualifier and, and stream and that sort of thing is that everybody should have the same opportunity to go as far as each other in the same environment. It's a bit like, for me, using VAR in, in the FA Cup this weekend. Suddenly it's available at every ground as the quarterfinals onwards, even if it wouldn't be available for the rest of the tournament. If you had it at a Premier League ground and it was available, you could use it. But if not, it wasn't available. I, I don't think you can have different rules in different environments for different players that the pro tour is slightly different. You're going to get enough opportunities to be back there and do it again. But for the dev tour, the challenge tour where it's access to something higher or qualifiers, all games should be in the same environment for me. That, that includes streaming because those cameras do come with a different pressure. Tracking your averages through dark connect adds enough pressure to some kids as it is without then going, Oh, by the way, not only are you doing that, but you're doing it on camera with everybody at home watching that then could possibly find you on social media or comment about how bad you played or people like Leighton Bennett, who has more exposure than a lot of players on the development tour anyway, through his BDO World Youth Championship exploits, etc., being criticised for his attitude at the age of 15 and 16. And I think if you stream, you only open up more opportunities to, to do that towards the younger generation. 
because that's their safe environment to go and learn how to play the game in a professional environment. And if they're doing something wrong, a board official or someone else there will say, actually, mate, it's a bit wrong that. It's a bit off that. You can't do that here. You'll get warned. You'll get fined. You'll get all of that. But to do that on stream with loads of people watching and then turn to the Facebook groups, which can be absolutely poison. Look, social media is not a great place sometimes. All it takes is one little action out of character, out of turn, or you throw an extra dart in frustration or you're upset with yourself. That can turn into a big deal for a kid, basically. Plenty of valid points, and, and that's why we're here. Um, let's throw open the, the, the chat room for, for question time as well. Uh, whilst we do a week in darts, so to get them in, um, Matt Clark winning week six of the Super Series, um, doing it again, Superman. Uh, yeah, so good. It's do you know what I have to watch? I have to watch it in blocks because of course, much of it is during you know working hours. Um, so I end up having like I have to series link it all and then watch it all in blocks, and then it's a nightmare because we're so connected to social media that I ended up knowing you know I'm all I I, I rarely get to watch any super series where I don't know who's won, and it's, it takes all the fun out of it. So it's um. I do look forward to Super Series when it's not during the hours of... Uh, well, mind you, it's either during the hours of work or the hours of sleep for me because of the, the way I structure my life. Yeah. Um, Good, should we have the weekly Corey Cabby Visa update? <laughs> uh, yeah. hey, look, all, all we know is, I know that um, not everyone listens to us all the time, but all we know is that Corey Cadby and Christian Perez have both applied for their visas, but both have not been granted yet. Um, so that, that that's all we know at the moment to do with that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Bill, uh, Matt Campbell's flight was delayed by 17 hours. He only got to the venue yesterday morning just in time to play on 20 minutes sleep. So preparation, not great, shall we say. And look, these things happen when you're stressed, no practice, you 17 hours delay and everything like that. It, it's, it, it, it happens. Um, so I don't know. Daz, all I know is one of them. I don't know who's with him, but Charlie Corstafine will be making his Premier League debut in Newcastle, boys. So pleased for Charlie. Yeah, that's good news, that. It'll be good to good to see him up there. They'll appreciate I'm, him, I'm uh, sure, uh, in the North Yeah, yeah a- absolutely buzzing for him. Um, so... Uh, so it's one day, you know, big... If anybody's going, by the way, if anybody in the chat room is going to Newcastle on Thursday, give me a message on Twitter and we'll have a palm on. Um, and though, Nick, Paul, Paul Nicholson, I don't know if it was, he either did an article for the PDC website or Sport in Life. I can't remember which one. But it, what's that? Sport in Life. Uh, it, 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 it was one or the other. Uh, was it the top five worst losers or ba- worst bad losers in darts or whatever it was? What's the difference between good winners and losers, yeah. And yeah. Drag and, it off and, 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 and he put Gary in the bad loser category. I'm more surprised that Gary read it. Yeah, someone's pointed it out to him. He's not gone looking for it, has he? <laughs> <laughs> in fact, Phil, who pointed it out to him? <laughs> who, sent, who sent him it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, not not guilty on that one. And so, yeah, that 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 was what Gary was was having a pop out. But look, it's just refreshing that Gary cares. Um, just off the subject, it's just come up on my Twitter. That's why I was looking a minute. Uh, Matt Law, very very experienced and good um, journalist for the Daily Telegraph exclusive. Tottenham expected um, to agree Antonio departure this week. Yeah, well, that is about as 
shocking as um, water yeah. is wet. Yeah, exactly. Me predicting Chris Dorby victories, I think, at the minute. Um, Did yeah, you just say on. good and journalist in the same sentence, by the way? Some of the football journalists are very, very good. Sam Wallace is absolutely exceptional. Henry Winters, brilliant. There are a few that are very, very good. There are a few absolute arseholes. I agree with you. <laughs> but there are some very, very good ones as well. Um, so Sam Wallace is my favourite football journalist. I miss Hold the Back Page on a Sunday morning. That beats me. You don't remember Hold the Back Page? I didn't have Sky. <laughs> Dan, you must remember Hold the Back Page. Yes, of course I do. I yeah. still don't have Sky. There was... It's amazing. Like... Yeah, oh, be, be, oh, um, be a Sunday supplement, yeah. Um, Jai, you might know his name. Who was the absolute... There was an app... We're talking about journalist. There was a right bell end of a journalist that used to cover Man United... I can't remember what his name was, but he was an absolute tool. He used to he used to cover both Manchester clubs, but he used to cover United a lot as well. And I can't remember what his name was. Oh, he, yeah, who was he? He was an absolute bell end, wasn't he? Yeah, he used to cut. Co- yeah, he used to come on Talksport all the time. That's not, yeah. That's I, it. Used to, I used to yeah. just turn it off because you just say, "Oh, there's a dickhead on the telly again." Yeah, Neil, Neil Custis. That's the that's one. The, that's, that's, the, that's the one. Yeah, couldn't remember his name. He, he was. He he had that. He, he had that sort of t- twin attack of being himself a bell end and also constantly talking about Man United. So it was like a twin attack all the time on your on your radio stream. Yeah. So, anyway. But- but, but we've, we've gone off subject. Back, back yeah. to the darts. Um, yeah, good news for Charlie. Hopefully, Owen Binks next. Yeah, look, Owen had his first taste of um, TV action, streamed action. He did a game on board two at the UK Open. Yeah, I caught um, him on Thursday, actually. It was good to chat with him. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, um, it was good for him. Will Ando qualify for the World Grand Prix? Right now, Gary Anderson is very well placed for the World Grand Prix. I think he is fourth or fifth in that list. I will tell you two seconds on the Grand. Oh, he's third on the Grand Prix list. So yes, very well placed. Uh, uh, me, Boise, Gob, and Dan is coming on the Saturday. Yes, I'll be there with um, the youngest member of the team. He'll be along with us. We're very, very excited about the weekend. And politest. By somewhere, by somewhere. (laughs) 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 Among this group of rabble, yeah. Um, Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, the way he's in, look, the the Euro Tour qualifier draw is a bit brutal, isn't it? Because there's no seeding, so... Technically, Gary and Gezi could draw each other in round one tomorrow. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? <sighs> well, one, one, one for Dan here, as he's not on all the time. Best place for a but Palmo. Oh man, um, I see. I I partially bought the house that I live in because. The pub in the village does an incredible palmo. Um, it depends. So you, what you've got is you've got. Uh, I'll be, I won't bear loads of time on palmos, but you've got two categories. You've got like pizza shop palmo, like takeaway palmo, and then you've got restaurant palmo. And and oh. like I w- there's there is a place that is called the Ship in in a village called Red Marshall, next village up from us, and that's got a palmo menu with sixty different palmos on it, and the menu is a map of the world. And every palmo is influenced by, so you can get a Greek palmo, and it's got like olives and feta on it, and you can get something else, and it's got chorizo and something, and like that. That that I would highly recommend if you look if you're local, the ship in Red Marshall. Um, will the Premier League format change next year? Do you think I will be absolutely? <laughs> yeah. I will be amazed if it is still the one it is now. 
If it's still the same, I actually retire. I resign from this show. Either that, or I think we might end up seeing like some sort of football style Super League breakaway. Whereby we get eight or nine players and just go, oh, fuck it, we're going to go and do it ourselves. We're going to uh, live, live darts. Yeah, exactly. We're going to book all these arenas and the Saudis are just going to book them up. Right. I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Nothing's ever happened like that in darts before, has it? Like... Ah, yeah. Right. <laughs> devil's advocate here. Live darts. Forget the top 10 in the world. If there would be 10 players to form a new breakaway, which ten would it be? Do the Saudis own it? Yeah, we can play. We can say the Saudis own it. Chris Dobby, Callan Ridge, Ryan <laughs> <Brown>. <laughs> Um, yeah, and all and all the Man City fans. Um, oh, I don't know. But all three of them. All the all the greed. All, all, all it'd be the ten greediest players, wouldn't it? The top four definitely would be involved. So it, you'd definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, be Humphreys and Cullen because of their Premier League emissions. That hundred percent, like you could just point <laughs> that, can you? Like, you put me in the Premier League. Well, I'm going in. Easy, Humphreys and Cullen, straight off. I think we end up with with Van der Vaart because Michael only go if he gets to take Vincent. Yeah. That's like, the rogue, that's like the rogue European Super League when Spurs got an invite. Yeah. Somehow, much to the confusion of all of the world, James Wade would be picked. James Wade would be there. Wade would go because no, because like, he hates darts. Unless he's going just for a payday because he has to turn what, up less. Pay 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 I'm what not sure he's going to live that more other than a payday. I'm not sure Michael Smith would care. Oh, if, they, if Michael Smith would take the money, they all would. There you go, Mace, Mace knows. If Humphreys wasn't excluded from the Premier League this year, I think he'd turn into the Rory McIlroy poster boy. I think he'd stay. <laughs> <They're> like, I, <laughs> I'm angry, angry press interviews all the time. I am. How awful and evil it is. This is my tour. Oh yeah, um, Barney's gone. Barney's there. No, that's that. The, the Dimitri's the more the McIlroy poster boy one. Yeah, doing the interviews in five different languages, yeah. telling everybody how great Gary Hearn is. Yeah, the, 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 Dimitri's the rollout one. <laughs> oh, I love that. Uh, oh, I love that. That's, that, that's right. Do the, do the German TV broadcasters come in for 10% so that Gabriel Clemens gets in? Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh, I actually love that. Um, yeah, look, we see look, no, the, the numbers that we see. I don't know where they come from, but Premier League numbers aren't particularly great right now on TV by the look of it. I warned them. <laughs> Cause, because Barry really listens to us. I mean... A lot of other people do, so someone should have told him. <laughs> <laughs> if you are watching, even in Baza. <laughs> See, we've got fresh from his operation, Lee Boyce and Chris Mason in the chat room. There he is. Boyce is back, back home and recovering, ready after the operation. Uh, <laughs> John O's rule number one. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> God hates that saying with a passion. <laughs> She's not... He hates it because it, he hates it because it's true. That's why he oh, hates it. it. <laughs> true. Sport should be sporting. It is very sport. <laughs> I, I do think though, there's a massively skewed like there's a massive like because we all you know without getting into it. Let's be honest, there are ways to watch Sky Sports that don't involve having a Sky Sports subscription. Uh, my current... Bill Taylor said on national TV when he said, go and get your fire stick out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but hey, also, the program was great this weekend and I don't have Sky. <laughs> so like, like Mason said there, Sky subscriptions are down massively. Like, Without wanting to have a rant about it, like I don't have my internet through Sky, so I just have Sky TV. Nothing else. Just television from Sky, nothing else. My Sky monthly bill now, today, is £130 a month. And it's that because I've got Sky Sports and BT Sport, and like because I watch the sport, 
but it is mental expensive. Like that's but so so but I assume I guess that plenty of people are watching it through nefarious different ways of doing it, and they yeah, don't one, of them, one of them sat in the top corner, and they don't but they don't they don't count towards the viewing figures. Like you're not a number, right? No one count. No, you know, no one knows you're watching it. Like Sky Sports. Well, so well, the viewing I figures are going down. Right? Multiple people are just one number because they just rebroadcast and imp- That's it. But so that's that's you know. The, I've seen more adverts in Euros for the last few months than anything else in my life. The viewing <laughs> figures are a, are, a, are a mile away, aren't they, from from the reality? But the the tungsten toff doesn't pay for it. I was going to say, I know a man where I can get you one. <laughs> oh, to, to be fair, to, are we agreeing with Lee Boyce? Does God, has he gone for the Callum Ridge look tonight? No. And I'll get an haircut Wednesday, so don't you start, Boycey. <laughs> well, you know, he's like, don't forget you know, to pack your iron, bitch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Look, everyone. Absolute tremendous live lounge tonight. We've loved every single minute of it. Um, plenty going on on our channel. Loads of content. We've got four, maybe five interviews in the back end to go out this week, um, which will be good. Um, some nice news dropping tomorrow. Spoiler alert, but stay tuned to OD. And you will find that out. Um, what's that? So will I by the sounds of things. Hey. You know what it is? Do I? Taxi. Some, someone replace him. He's not been paying attention, has he? No. Someone's had a long day, haven't they? Someone's tired. Someone's into his eighth hour of streaming. Yeah. What? Oh, let's get the violins out for the tungsten toff. No, we're not streaming the Euro Tour. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be worried about that. Uh, <laughs> but as you say, plenty going on. Make sure you subscribe. We will be at Black. We will be in Blackpool for the World Seniors. All the reaction from the players as they happen, as well as Newcastle Premier League. Going to try and catch up with Dan whilst I'm there as well. Um, but. It's all good, boys. It's all good. It's been a good start to the week. Gary Anderson is back. Gary Anderson's going to the match play. Isn't that right, Gob? Yes. So you've actually just admitted that he is going to the match play after he's failing to do so all day. Like, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. I never said he qualified. I just said he's going to go. He's a really, <laughs> Gary's a really big darts fan. Did you not know? Yeah, clearly. <laughs> 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 um, but everyone, chat room, give yourself a round of applause. Absolute top show this evening. I've been Phil Bars, Jack Garwood, Dan Simpson. Thank you very much. As always, it's us signing out. We'll see you at 8 pm next Monday as Boise returns. And by God, is he going to get some shit? See you all soon. Bye. <laughs>